Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to discuss working with component stairs and a few little tricks on how to make them work for you. So let's jump in. As you can see up top, what I have here is uh, Revit. This is Revit 2013. This works in 2014 also. Um, Autodesk introduced uh, component stairs in 13, so we can play with them and see what kind of cool stuff they they do and then in 14 they actually revised them and made them a little nicer so uh, here we go up top you'll notice on the architectural tab we have stairs now if we drop this down you'll see stairs by component and stairs by sketch if you're using Revit LT you can use stairs by component stairs by sketch are not available so this is how they work we fire this up now when it fires up for the first time you'll see we have the ability to adjust all different aspects just like when we're doing stairs by sketch we also have the ability now to do left to right, which is kind of nice. Uh, we have an offset feature, which I'll set just so you can see how it, it works here. And then we have automatic landings. I'm actually going to turn that off um, right now, and I'll show you how the, the reason why. So if I want to start, let's say, going up a particular wall, now if I pick and I start to draw, you'll notice how it's actually drawing inside of the wall. Now if it's a space bar, you'll see how it jumps out. So that same logic that works in AutoCAD, uh, excuse me, in uh, Revit walls uh, works here. Now it says 18 created, uh, 8 created, 18 remaining. So I'm just going to pick here. And we're not going to worry so much about the actual, uh, let's say, door right there. We're just going to create the stair. So I'll come up here a little bit. And notice it's tracking the original. Now if I want to, I can actually come over here and track here. So you can tell it wherever you want to track to make that landing. Now I'm going to say come here because I don't want a gooseneck. Now come on over. Okay, now you see it's actually on top of the other. I'm not going to panic, and now I'm actually going to come out here, and I'm going to draw this one out here. So you're thinking, man, that's a bit of a mess. And it is. That's okay. I'm going to take these guys, and they're individual components, and that's what makes them sweet. So I can drag this one down, hold the shift down, and say drag straight, right? Okay. I may take this guy, and I may move him over here. Or I may put him on top of the other one, which you're thinking, nah, that's going to be crazy. Again, I'm holding the shift key down. Now, at this point, I've got these two stairs on top of each other. This one's sitting out in space. And again, I'm going to drag him a little closer. And we get him maybe where we want him to be. Now, um, at this point, let's go and uh, go to 3D. So I pull 3D here. And you'll see how it's drawing those components for us. So we come up, come around, come around again. Now, you'll notice that the top one, I hope we go back down to level 1, that this one has a lot more treads than these. So you say, well, maybe I want to make an adjustment. So I'm going to take this guy out, and I'm going to drag him out again, just kind of playing off of that. And we can make some adjustments. And here's where it gets kind of fun. So notice that one says 8, and this one says 9. If I grab this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And see that little dot? I'm going to click on that dot, and I'm going to drag it a little bit. And boop, it says 9. Okay. Now that one's 9. Now here's where this one says 9, too. So I'm going to have to say, well, no, if that one's 9, I've got to bring this one up 1. So I want to have the numbers consistent. 1, 9, 10, 15. And we can move them as needed. So I'll use the old move command, and I'll use a different one here, move to, let's say, here. All right, so we move them where we want them to be. Now, if you want to use align or something like that, you can use the align command. All right, so there we go. Now, you'll notice this one says 9 and 10. That's all happy, happy. Now, up top, you'll see we have 26 and 16. So I'm going to take this one, click on it, I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to grab that dot again click the dot and I'm going to drag it and it's going to actually bring it on up click hold drag and I'm going to let go you'll see that it's actually up to 18 now so that one's up to 18 and I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to do the, uh, pretty much the same thing I bring this one to 19 there we go so by adjusting these we get them the way we need them to be now earlier we were talking about this one having one wrap so let's go ahead and do that I'm just going to again move it from let's say right here to right here just use that as a reference and then playing off of it just so you can see how it happens again I'll grab it I'm gonna grab the, the blue dot click hold drag bring it back one and then to make the numbers work out I'll grab this guy again click the blue dot drag it and it's gonna click one now if we need to change how these start and stop that was a question that came up if you select the component itself and then you hit edit type okay you'll see we have lots of different information in here on the tread, the height, all this stuff that we can manipulate in here. Uh, tread nosing, etc. Cancel. Now, if I go to individual, you can see it says begin with the riser, end with the riser. So I can 
kind of adjust how this starts and stops and how each one of these individually starts and stops which makes it nice so some nice stuff there we can adjust we can even adjust the actual width so if I need to change them I can even hold the control key down select all of these and let's say I need them to be three foot six I say well you guys are all going to be three foot six and now they all get larger okay at this point we may need to move a couple of them again so I'll take this guy and we'll move it out I'll just use the nudge command just for simplicity here okay so uh, got that way we want it and now I'm going to take this guy and we're moving back on top of this one using the move command I'll say from let's say right there to right here All right. now let's check it out in 3D see what we have okay so we have A, B, and C so that gives us the ability to set those up now back to our plan view or even we can do it in 3D let's go do that uh, I'm now going to fire off the landing tool now the landing tool looks at the components so if I pick landing A and landing B you'll see how it actually creates that landing for me now let's take a look at how these things are uh, again at how they start and stop since this guy up top doesn't have a landing yet if I highlight him you'll notice how he starts uh, ends with the riser so I'm gonna turn that off and notice how it, it just adjusted the stair you see now if I say so you can pick these elements and tell it how to start and stop okay back to where we were at this point I'm gonna go back to landing again I'm gonna say 17 and 18 that rolls it around like so once we're happy with the construction all the things we've laid out we can now hit finish now we edited the stairs a bit we can also edit the landings if I was to grab let's say right here on this landing let me hit escape a couple times grab the landing you'll notice I also have the ability to manipulate these also so let's say I want to drag it to here or for instance I want to take this and drag it over to here alright so we can make these adjustments for our scenario this time we hit finish and what Revit should do is create that stair based on all the information we gave it now you may get this little note uh, in the middle that you have issues with the landings and that's fine and now let's take a look at it in 3D again now what you'll notice is it built the stair, it came up, came around notice what's happening here we have that single step and then it goes up on this one notice we have a gooseneck because of the landing or the we got a riser and a riser right here so it's got to make a quick turn and come up Okay, uh, let's change the handrails out I'm going to hold the control key down gr grab both handrail assemblies and we'll change it out to something different let's say try this one we'll pop through a few of them you'll see how Revit then makes the changes accordingly so notice how it comes around like so and comes on up so good stuff there let's try one more there's the different rails you may get a little issue here so that's the the quick down and easy way to create using component stairs in Revit now the top landing it may be just as easy for me to create this out of a floor and make that happen now since we're working on stairs let's talk a little bit about uh, handrails and all that or and good stuff like that being if you're working with the new component types these are all separate parts. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in depth on each one. I just want to show you how to get to the pieces. If I roll over this handrail, okay, a railing, you notice how it grabs the whole assembly. Now when I come down here, you'll see it has different offsets. Now if I set this to zero, okay, you'll notice that that pipe jumps right next to that element right there, right? Now as I start putting these numbers in, you'll notice how that changes. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to type in, let's say, maybe negative one that's a well let's put a negative one inch there and uh, you'll see how it jumps out so that jumped onto that which is nice so we have the ability to manipulate those now that is an instance parameter for that particular railing now the next thing we'll look at is more of a type parameter when I grab this you'll notice it says railing pipe if I hit edit type in here we have the ability to adjust the structure okay cancel we also have the, the baluster placement cancel and you'll notice as we come down we have a thing called top rail handrail and handrail 2 and you're thinking well wait I never seen those in the earlier versions 
This was introduced in 13. It gives you the ability to individually adjust the top rail, handrails, from the, let's say, the array that's set up in the structure. So to take a closer look at that, you'll notice how this rail, okay, is 3 foot 6 inches. Let's put it to 5 foot 6, just so you can see. Now I'm editing the, the type. Now when I hit OK, watch what happens. Notice how that rail jumped up. Okay, so this is not built into the, the array or matrix anymore. What it is, it's built separate, so you can adjust it, which is quite nice. Now we're going to go back to edit type, and we'll put that back down. We can also change the um, the profile that it's using. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the handrail position. You'll notice that the handrail position is sitting here, and it says left circular. But notice the height and the offset is grayed out. You're thinking, oh. Well, here's how that works. Within the family, here's where it gets crazy. If I hover over it and I hit tab once, you see how I'm I'm I actually reach into the rail and I can pick just the handrail. Now when I hit edit type, watch what happens. I can edit it. Handrail clearance, height, all that information, miter. Now you're thinking, what's all this about? If I change this to let's say fillet, I'll put a small fillet radius in here, maybe two inches. There we go, three, if it'll be happy with that. Uh, and we have the ability to make that adjustment. Now I'm going to hit OK on that. And it didn't like our little piece there. So, But you'll notice how it actually put the little radius in there, see? Instead of using fillets, what it's doing radiuses now. So that's an individual element. Now to get to it again, hover over, hit Tab, select it. Now at this point, I hit Edit Type, and I can even add an extension. I'll say, let's give it a, a couple inches so I can do its thing. This is usually a good, good tip. Add it that. And then I'm say roll back to the wall. When I hit OK on that, you'll notice oop, it had a little, got upset with that path. Let's try that again. Highlight it. Edit type. And you may have to play with these a little bit. Say plus a tread. Hit OK on that. See if that makes it. No. All right. Well, we'll try it again. Edit type. Let's go ahead and add, uh, I don't know, six inches in there and see if that makes it happen. No. All right, so I'm not sure why that's happening, and it may have been the bottom one. I'm not sure, so let's go ahead and check that out. All right, yeah, so you can see the bottom was actually happening. We're looking at the wrong one. So uh, you may say, well, I want to add a tread in there um, to make that adjustment. So that one's coming out and going around. Now, that's how we can actually manipulate them independently. So understanding that gives you the ability to um, adjust different parts to make them do what you want to do. You'll also notice that since we used a radius, you'll see how it's trying to use the radiuses throughout. So the real trick with the component stairs is the ability to jump in deep by just using the tab. So if I hit tab, I can grab this guy. Now, this is just the beginning. You can hit edit rail, where it'll actually let us edit the purple line. I could hit edit path, and now it'll actually let me edit the particular elements that are here. I can draw it, etc. So you get the ability to go even further than you did before. So let me zoom on in real kind of close here, and you'll see we have that that line. So I may say, okay, I'm going to take that, I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to come out. And there we go. Now I'm going to hit it. It's not happy with that because I'm just kind of doing it random. But when I hit finish, you'll see I'd actually use that, and I'm going to hit finish, and I'm going to hit finish, and I get all the way out. And you'll see I actually created that element for me. So you can get... Um, or do whatever you like to these. Now, there's a lot of depth here, as I mentioned, but a lot of times just playing with it makes it uh, easy to understand. Now, again, with the stairs, tab. See, I can pick that single assembly, and I can adjust it. Okay? I can roll over the handrail, or railing, and hit tab, and pick different parts of it, including the top, okay, and including this rail here to make those adjustments. So hopefully that demystifies how the stair component stairs work in Revit. Um, now, the final thing is if you want to take this and make a different, let's say, profile. I'm going to delete that wall, go back to level 1. I'm going to roll over this and hit tab. Okay, tab. No, what I'm trying to do is pick the stair landing. So there we go. Uh, so we've got the, the stair landing. Let's go ahead and fire up the stairs. So hit the stairs. I'm going to hit edit stairs. That's what you want to do first. Okay. Now inside of here, I'm going to hover over the landing, which is right here. Now if you want to, you have the ability to convert it to line work. Now by converting it to line work, 
you can't go back. It says component sketch converting a custom sketch base component is irreversible. That's fine. Close. So on this single element, I'm now going to hit edit sketch. So I'll take that edge off and I'll replace it with a curve. Now that's a boundary. So we'll say boundary start end flex it and now we hit finish. Now what we've done is we've recreated this using Sketch. So we're using Sketch more like uh, salt and pepper instead of a major component. We go and sprinkle it in as needed. When we hit finish, now Revit's going to attempt to create all that and make it work. Let's go check it out in 3D. So there you go. So the real trick with this is to understand there's depth. Okay, so when you hover over things, tab, tab, see I can even pick the stringer. I can go in here and hit edit type and I can adjust that stringer. So the real trick is tab over things, dig in a little bit, kick it around, and uh, get comfortable with components in Sketch, and you should be good to go. Hope you enjoyed that tip. If you have any questions or want to find out more about our company, check us out on the web at thebimguys.com. Thank you.